I'm doing it. I'm actually making a structural engineering software video. In this video, I'm going to be going over the different types of softwares that we use in the structural engineering building design industry. I know this is one of the most requested videos that I've gotten. What type of softwares that we use in the industry and which ones that you should know and why we use them and when do we use them. So those are the things that I'll be going over in this video. Let's get into today's content. Okay, I'm just gonna divide these into categories on different types of softwares and I'll be going over uh, what we use them for and what are the chances of you actually using it in the industry. First category is general design and analysis. Uh, some of the most popular ones that you'll most likely use in the industry are Risa 3D and eTabs and SAP 2000. These are programs that you can uh, design buildings, uh, full 3D buildings in, in these programs. Like for example, in Risa 3D, you can design steel structures, uh, concrete structures, um, different types of structures like that, and you can analyze them for analysis, apply earthquake loads to them, and apply gravity loads. So all these different types of softwares allow you to do that. So for example, in eTabs, you can model a concrete parking structure, uh, apply seismic loads to it and check the type of loads that are going to the concrete shear walls uh, depending you can also do column designs, shear wall designs, steel member designs so depending on how your firm uses it uh, these programs have a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of analysis and design so because they can do a lot of things they do have a bigger learning curve than some of these other programs that I'll get to later but if you're working in the building design industry, you're probably gonna be using one of these softwares. There's a lot of softwares out there. So, some alternatives that I see in the industry also that are similar to this are STAD Pro and Tecla Structural Designer. I'm personally not too familiar with these, but from what I can see these, and from what I've heard, is that they basically do the same thing, a lot, a lot of it with uh, analysis and structural design. These softwares, you'll be most likely using them when you're trying to design a whole building, a whole building system. So if you got a concrete uh, seven story building, you can model the whole model in one of these softwares. In the industry, eTabs is most likely used in this case when you're modeling an actual building. It's a lot more user friendly that way. But if you're analyzing a special structural system, let's say you're doing a special trust, then that's when you wanna get into uh, more of these uh, specialized software such as SAP 2000, that's a lot more analysis, uh, special analysis driven. So if you got a really funky truss or, or weird structure and you really want to get into the the nuts and bolts of it, then an analysis software like SAP 2000 or even Risa 3D can is more geared towards that. eTabs is a lot more geared towards whole building design. But at the end of the day, they're performing analysis and if you want design for your buildings and your structures. The next category is general member design. So instead of designing the whole building and modeling the whole building, we do use software that's more specialized towards uh, general member design. So for example, they're hanging something off of an existing steel beam or a new steel beam. We just want to figure out if that specific beam works. There's a lot of softwares that do this, but I think one of the most popular ones in the US at least is EnterCalc and I've also heard of S-Frame. These two types of softwares, basically you go into them, you go into one of their modules, you can either go into steel beams, wood beams, columns, a 2D frame. So they do a lot of these, a lot simpler modules that you can just go into the program, put in the loads for whatever structure or whatever beam member that you have or column and just figure out if the beam's okay and, and what, what are the stresses and if the member is going to be okay. So it's really quick. You go in there, input the loads and you get out. So in the industry, you'll be using these a lot when you need to do a lot of uh, just a lot of quick checks that you don't have time to model the whole building. You just want to check something really quick, input some loads and just check to see if that member is going to be okay. So yes, you will be using these types of programs a lot. The next category is steel design. So my go-to for if you have a big structural steel system, so let's say you have a multi-story office building that's made out of all steel. 
I tend to see a lot in the industry that RAM structural system is, is used a lot, at least in the US. RAM structural system, I find it a lot better for steel. It also has concrete modules and foundation modules, but I find that it really performs well when you're working with steel. So it allows you to, to design the steel members of the whole building and then also the, the lateral elements too, such as uh, brace frames, moment frames. So I tend to see that a lot in steel uh, structural designs. But I've also seen a lot of other alternatives too, like some of the softwares that I mentioned. E-Tabs can do this, and I'm pretty sure STAD Pro and uh, Tecla Structural Designer. I think there's a lot of programs out there that that can lend itself to this, but just from the trends that I'm seeing, RAM structural system tends to be the, the go-to. For steel detailing, there's a lot of other modules out there too, but I tend to like to use Risa Connection. I tend to use this when I have a very special case for a very special connection. Most of the time, if I have a steel connection, I already have design tables for it, or I just look in the AISC manual, but if there's a special condition, I tend to go to Risa Connection just because it's, it's a lot it's 3D friendly, I like to see things in 3D, and the cal calculations and its reports are pretty transparent, so it's easy to follow. So are you gonna be using RAM structural system in the industry, how popular is it? For the most part, it's, it's pretty popular, but I don't think every firm has it. Same thing with Risa Connection, I think you're at least going to hear about it in the industry and from your peers, so it might be a good to know program, at least to, to be aware of. Risa Connection might be a little less popular, but it's good knowing that it's out there. A lot of the times for special connections, you'll probably end up doing it yourself uh, or looking it up in the AISC manual. The next category is steel, anchor or steel anchorage to concrete. So these types of programs allow you to design the anchor bolts and sometimes base plates into concrete. So these programs calculate uh, things that are in the ACI Appendix D. So for example, it, it it checks to see if concrete breakout governs, if it's going to break out from the from the edge, if you're close to the slab edge. It checks the steel tension. Basically, it checks these different failure modes to figure out if your anchorage connection to the concrete is sufficient. So the main three programs used, at least in the U.S. industry, are Simpson Strong Tie Anchor Designer, uh, Hilti has Profis Anchor, I believe, and you also have Dewalt. All three of these programs are pretty similar. Some of them have paid versions that are a little more advanced, but it's up to you and your firm. But they basically all have free versions, and if you're a student, you can just download it and and just see how it works, because you, you will be using these softwares in the industry. I don't know if you've ever had to do ACI Appendix D by hand. Uh, you should, just to see how kind of tedious it is. So that's why you will be using these a lot, just to save you a lot of time. So you don't have to do a ACI Appendix D calculations uh, every day. The next category is concrete slabs. I'm talking about uh, mild reinforced concrete slabs, mat foundations, one-way slabs, two-way slabs, and even concrete beams. I think three of the most popular ones in the industry in the US are RAM Concept, uh, Adapt, and safe. For the most part, these programs allow you to model a complete uh, floor plan of a slab, model the different thicknesses, the, the cap thicknesses, the drop cap thicknesses, input the loads on top of the slabs, and the programs basically allow you to uh, design the slabs to figure out how much flexible reinforcement there is, how much shear reinforcement there is, even options for shear stud rails and how many those are. So if you work for a structural design firm that does a lot of concrete slabs, uh, most likely, um, almost guaranteed that you will be at least exposed to one of these softwares, especially as concrete slabs get more and more complicated. So like I said, you'll mainly be using these types of programs for complicated slabs. You don't need them all the time, especially if you're doing a, a post-tension slab, that's kind of a subcategory of this. So for post-tension slabs, you can design post-tension slabs in these softwares also but there are other simpler softwares similar to EnterCalc that are kind of just uh, post-tension member design. Uh, these post-tension member softwares are, uh, the most popular ones are, that I see are, are PT Data and Adapt PT, so Adapt has a version of that. It's basically similar to uh, EnterCalc calculation. You'll most likely input, input your data into a 2D software and just input the loads and it kind of gives you the design a lot quicker than going through one of those uh, RAM concept or adapt 
modeling procedures. The next category is concrete columns. A lot of the general softwares that we reviewed, such as eTabs and Risa, they, they probably do a lot of these uh, concrete column designs also, but what I see that's probably the most popular, at least in the US industry, is a software called SP Column. This is pretty easy to use once you have your loads for the columns, you can just input them in this software and it'll give you the PM interaction diagram fairly quickly and it, it does check such as a, a slenderness also. And it's also good if you're checking the moment capacities in any of your concrete shear walls. So you'll be using this for seismic analysis also if you got a concrete shear wall that you need to be verified. I say you're most likely gonna be using this or some sort of PM interaction diagram software in the industry if you work with concrete a lot. The next category are retaining walls. I'm not talking about crazy uh, bridge retaining walls or anything like that or MSC walls, but basically you, know, you have a cantilever, basic cantilever concrete wall or a basement wall. These types of retaining walls that are just made out of concrete or even uh, CMU, the softwares that I see are Retain Pro and sometimes even EnterCalc. Retain Pro is basically a more fancy version of EnterCalc, but it's easy enough to use. You just input the values and you see what, what type of loads and, and the dimensions. Uh, and so you can actually see your design. So that, that makes it very easy to see. So you'll probably be using th these types of programs or if, well, I know a lot of firms also have Excel spreadsheets or something like that. But if you purchase software, it'll probably be one of those. Next category is wood. So the software program that I see a lot that's used for wood member design, at least in the West Coast in the US, is Forte. It's a free software package. You can download it if you if you want to play around with it. But it basically allows you to design uh, wood joists, wood beams, wood headers, you know, different type of wood members for different types of loading conditions. So it's, it's really good for doing some preliminary sizing. You can get in there. It's a 2D program, so it's very quick and easy to use. And it allows you to study a lot of different design options fairly quickly just because it is a 2D software. Another alternative is one of those general design members like EnterCalc that allows you to design wood beams and wood joists also. For wood connection software, instead of going to the NDS to look up on the tables, if you, prefer, if you, prefer, if you prefer to just input the values of, let's say, a, a lag screw connection or a bolted connection, instead of going through the NDS, the AWC website has a online software. It's basically, you can just input the type of connection that you want and it'll give you the, the capacities for those types of connections. So if you go on the AWC website, it's the connection calculator. So if you work with wood, you're most likely gonna be using one of these, uh, very likely to be using one of these software programs. If not by Forte, Forte, you'll be using maybe EnterCalc or a lot of the other wood companies have softwares that are similar to it also. So for the most part, you'll probably be using one of the manufacturer softwares unless you already have your Excel spreadsheets set up for that. And similar to wood, we're getting into the cold form steel category. Cold form steel is a structural material that you might run into, which you probably will run into, but it's mostly used for lighter construction such as soffits or maybe a small structure or a mezzanine. But if you do run into it into the industry, the software that I see that's the most popular and I think that's one of the most effective is uh, Simpson Strong Tie CFS Designer. It's a pretty simple program to use. It's a 2D program. It allows you to design uh, cold form steel studs or beams or box headers fairly quickly. So you'll probably end up using that if you're working with cold form uh, steel a lot. All right, these last two programs are not really analysis programs, but they will be programs that you will uh, almost 90% sure that you'll you'll be using this these two programs in the industry, at least if you're working for a mid-sized to a large structural engineering firm. The first one that I use all the time is Bluebeam, uh, Revi, Revu Bluebeam. It's basically a ramped up version of Adobe PDF. It allows you to mark up drawings, look at drawings, add comments, draw lots of sketches. And it, the biggest thing about it is it basically allows you to go paperless. So instead of printing out drawings, you can mark up drawings and communicate your comments to the architect, the contractor, or to your engineering peers. A lot of the drawings are going digital now. So Bluebeam's kind of become the way that we communicate. It's kind of like, uh, 
what it did for email. Everyone's on email now instead of doing uh, paper trails. Now it's instead of sending drawings out, we're sending Bluebeam PDFs with all of our markups, with all of our sketches in Bluebeam. So it's very essential. I use it every day and you will most likely too because a lot of the industry is communication. Not just communicating one-on-one -on -one verbally, but through your drawings, through your sketches, through your exhibits, communicating your designs to the architect or whoever that you're trying to communicate it to. So Bluebeam, get used to it. You're most likely gonna be using it in the industry. If you're a student, you can download a demo. It's basically allows you to just mark up things very quickly and very uh, intuitively. So definitely go check out Bluebeam. It's hard for me to find a structural engineering firm that doesn't use it. And last but not least, the last software is Revit. A lot of the industry is getting more and more into BIM or building information modeling and Revit is one of the things that allows a firm to uh, get in into the game of that. Reddit, Revit, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically like CAD but now it's in 3D and it allows you to communicate through different uh, software programs so it's it's a lot more complicated than just saying that it's 3D, but basically BIM allows you to communicate across different programs and, and disciplines such as mechanical, electrical, plumbing. They can get all the models together and do a lot of class detection, things like that. And you can even, if you have your model set up right, you can even ex start exporting things to those software analysis programs like uh, eTabs or RAM Structural System. So you'll be definitely seeing a lot more of Revit if you haven't already. And if you're a structural engineer, depending on what type of firm that you're working for, you may just need to know how to get around Revit. You don't need to be a pro at it. You don't need to draw everything and learn how to model everything. Sometimes they have special designers specifically for that role. But nonetheless, it's good to know how to at least get around it because instead of just viewing drawings in 2D, you can actually just go into the 3D model and get a better understanding of what the building intent is and how the building's supposed to look, at least in 3D. And Revit is basically our drawing, our drafting software that we, we use. That's what a lot of uh, structural engineering firms use to produce their drawings now. So if you haven't heard of it already, ready, it's, some, it's a program to at least get familiar with. Man, that's a lot of software. So yes, in the structural engineering industry, you will be using a lot of software you still be using the classic Excel sheets. We still use uh, a lot of Excel sheets and even MathCAD. And comment below if you're a structural engineer or work in the structural engineering industry, what softwares do you use and which ones are the, the ones that you like the most and that you use the most. And yeah, share with us in the comments below so we can all get a sense of what types of software are out there and being used in the structural engineering industry. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the podcast, leave a comment below, like the video. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. I post a video almost every week. I think I missed one last week. But subscribe anyways, and I'll see you next time.